Welcome back to another OMLAB tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about um, sampling very specific pieces of a synth or a synth sound, whether that synth be an instrument or a sound effect or you know a pad, a lead, a bass, a pluck, or whatever. Um, we're going to take a look at how you can isolate just the portion of the delivery of that, that sound uh, that you would like to hold on to for the project that you're working on and get rid of the rest. Turn that into a sampled instrument um, and get even more from it. Stuff that you probably won't even expect, which is always really good for inspiration, experimentation, that type of thing. Um, and the reason why we want to share this with you is because we've been getting an increase in requests for how to go about making different types of sampled instruments and different sampling workflows. Um, so what we wanted to do is just kind of break down uh, one of the, the, the workflows that's included inside of um, the architecture of, uh, well, this is Logic Pro that we're using here today, but you can really use any DAW. They all have this functionality, functionality and workflow built into it um, already. So, um, so this is just a, a quick patch. We kind of grabbed it random out of an effects pack from an upcoming um, project that we'll be announcing soon sound is called strong amber and there's a ton of stuff that it can do um, these these macro controls down here will take you to other worlds in seconds flat but this right here is the sound that we're going to go for and as you can hear it's got a pretty sharp plucky attack and although I love it I wouldn't have programmed it without it but it's the middle of that sound that I'm more interested in for a few different reasons mostly texture uh, type stuff that's that's coming through that I really like, but uh, that's the sound we're going to record really quick, um, and that's exactly how this workflow starts. You identify a sound, then you record it. It's just that simple. All right, so hold on just one second here. Okay, that one was actually a pretty good take because we I pressed down on uh, the key after initially triggering the sound, which activates uh, something called aftertouch information being sent from the uh, MIDI controller here in the studio to uh, the, the synthesizer, Massive. Um, and we've programmed it so the aftertouch is affecting things like frequency shift, mix, and... Uh, uh, feedback amount so um, so it alters the sound a little bit um, but we're done with this we're done with this okay and and the whole point of, of of the process of something like this is you know what if you're not a sound designer what if you don't know synthesis and and what if you don't know which buttons to push and knobs to to turn to make everything change in the way that you want um, and this should this should help clear that up um, so we're just going to right click here and select bounce in place um, that is also going to be under bounce and join uh, in the drop down menus and we'll just keep the name here and uh, let's go ahead and mute the source track so we don't have to do that ourselves everything looks fine uh, okay so now we have a new um, track here in our project And it turned out quite great. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. And what, what we really want to do is get rid of uh, that initial pluck, first of all. Um, but I'd also like to find a place in the sound. And you can kind of see here in this waveform that there is some room for this, some consistency in the waveform shape and size. So we're just going to go ahead and we'll split the playhead or split the audio file there and it looks like it starts to taper a little bit around here so maybe we'll cut this right around here okay now with this highlighted we can uh, click this again and as you can see convert to new sampler track is already up here in my shortcuts but if you come down here to convert you can find it as well sampler track and all that does is and we'll just go ahead and say yes by regions and we're not going to worry about the name or the range or anything now because I'm going to actually show you how to do that in here Okay, uh, so what that did is it grabbed the audio from just this one region that we had highlighted and it uh, automatically imported it into a sampler for us. Okay, um, so now let's just uh, back this out, listen to it really quick. 
Okay, so um, it's pretty short, it cuts off. Um, there are issues, right? Uh, but fear not, we're just gonna open up our sampler here. And again, we're using Logic Pro, you do not have to be. Uh, the EXS24 is the stock or library sampler that's included inside of Logic when you purchase it. Um, you can use any third party or native sampler uh, in whatever program you're using and accomplish the same things. Uh, what we're going to do here is click on the edit button to disclose the actual setup of this. Okay, and, and we have one item in this sampled instrument here, and you can see that this uh, is on one key only. So if I press other keys, it's not going to do anything. Uh, maybe we should shift this over towards the center of the keyboard, and we'll just uh, drag this out. So now what that does is that, that, that pitches the sample. That allows us to, to play it across more keys. Okay, and actually these higher parts, you can kind of hear that there are some unexpected uh, new versions of the sound um, that are obviously useful um, for many different things, but you take something as small as that, it's just a, it's like part of a second of audio is all, um, and you get up here into the higher octaves and it makes a great little sound effect. Okay, um, and you can go down in the spectrum too and, and hear it again. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. Um, we'll come back up here. And uh, there's a couple things we need to take care of really quick. If we just press and hold a key right now, it only lasts for a second, less than a second. So we may want to um, loop this um, so it'll continually play. And you don't really see that as an option here. Um, in other samplers, it is there by default. You can just switch it on if it's not. Um, in any program, here's where you find it in Logic, under the View uh, drop down menu. Click on Loop. And as you can see, it extends your options here. So we'll go ahead and we'll say loop on. Um, and it doesn't change anything. And you wonder why? Well, uh, because the start and end points of, of the sampled uh, sound are exactly the same. So what we need to do is we're going to increase uh, the end, and you'll hear a difference. Ooh, very sharp. Lots of interesting sounds coming out there. Um, and maybe what we'll do is we'll take it up even further. Let's say, um, all right. Okay, there's still a little bit of uh, oddness there in that you can kind of hear between the beginning and end of the sample that there's like a little bit of clickiness. So what we're gonna do is use the crossfade parameter and just bring that up a little bit. Um, Nothing, nothing too fancy or complicated, just click and drag up there and all of a sudden you get a cleaner, smoother transition between the sample loops, okay? Um, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, we've spread it out across keys. We've added a little bit of crossfade there to get rid of the clicking. Um, but you know, this isn't a tutorial about processing. This is a tutorial about getting a very specific part of a synth's uh, sound, or an instrument's sound, or an effects sound, um, and then putting that into a new um, software instrument that you can then play. So let's go up a little bit. Let's go up a couple of octaves here. Yeah. Yeah, there's some interesting interesting stuff. Let's go down several octaves and see what we find. That's pretty awesome. Sounds kind of transformery or something. All right, so um, as you can imagine, many, many things can come of this. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll save it by clicking on this. It'll prompt us. We'll click, yes, that's what we can save it as. I don't really care. And here now you have all of the uh, tools in the sampler um, right here at your fingertips. And again, you can use any sampler. A third party sampler that's very popular is Contact from Native Instruments. You can pick that up for free um, in the player version um, and turn any sound you can imagine, no matter how short or long it is, into uh, 
um, a sampled instrument or at least put it into the sampler and begin tweaking it. You, you can use all of the envelope and modulation controls. There's different uh, effects plugins built into it. Um, and same here. You can add whatever you want on the rack. You can route it out to auxiliary tracks. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, there's even a sidechain input here. So it will receive an audio signal from something else. Um, and you can start getting kind of crazy with what you want to do with it. Uh, but that is exactly how you get just part of uh, the synth itself, not the whole delivery. Um, and again, let's just quickly listen to what we had before. Okay. Okay, so it's very different. It's transformed quite a bit. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll play this again. Really liking, really digging that low stuff right there. That's pretty nice. Although there are some higher register stuff that I've, I'm really enjoying as well. I'm envisioning some stuff for maybe a film or animation project here. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice sound effect material. Anyway, um, that's how you do it uh, in just a few clicks. Um, grab your synth, record a couple of notes, maybe just one, uh, bounce that in place. It's still in your project. You don't have to go hunting for the file. Again, this is about keeping things moving quickly. Uh, after you bounce it in place, you select the part of the audio waveform that you want to capture as your sampled instrument. Right click and choose that uh, convert to new sample track option. Um, and it's already loaded. Then you just simply spread uh, that one note out across all of the keys you want uh, to be able to play uh, that sound with, and then uh, loop it if you want it to be continuous rather than just one shot. Um, and then add a little bit of crossfade uh, between the samples so you don't hear any clicking. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. Um, we'll revisit this again soon, and we'll talk about different ways that we can resample and process uh, things once we have transformed them from a software instrument into a sampled instrument, which of course is a software instrument, so it's pretty meta, but we'll revisit that again later. Um, as always, if you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please get in touch with us by leaving a comment below. Thank you for stopping by, and we hope you can start putting this to good use in your very next project. See you again soon. Cheers.